Okay, you guys, so I am back again. I'm thinking I may do the wraparound. I kind of like that, actually. So I may do that, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I think I will. So here's our completed, a covered, mod podged envelope. So I forgot to tell you guys, the papers are six, are cut six, and then a little less than nine. Not like a little more than eight and three quarters. I just like took a sliver off of the, uh, the length. So I just wanted to tell you guys that. So it's all dry. I ended up putting some of that tissue paper on the inside here. So that's the only thing I did off camera. So now we're going to poke the holes in this. Oh, and I also chose my papers. I just, this is going to be more like a journal for writing and stuff. And I don't want it too thick. So I just went through my stash, picked some music um, sheet paper, some line paper. This is a postcard. Um, you can color that in. And then some uh, graph paper or ledger paper. And then just some junk from my stash, some book paper, some envelopes. And this is a page from the Paper Source magazine. And then these are from a book that I got at Tuesday morning. So I took, I'm putting lots of writing paper in there. And here are the papers that I picked from that stash. I don't know if I'm going to use this one yet. I just pulled it out. I just kind of wanted to keep with like the blues. So, I love this one. So this one's definitely going in. And definitely this one. And I think I will probably put the pink in this one. So, those are the papers that I picked. So, oh, and then these are going to be some more little bits and pieces. I'm going to collage into the book or maybe like tuck spots and stuff. Like this will probably be a journaling card. And this is also from the Tangie Baxter and the Rebecca McMean collection. I guess maybe they're partners. I'm not sure. Uh, this is Lisa's Altered Art, so I will cut some fussy cut these some of these little girls, give them some wings um, to kind of stick with the theme. And then this is also Tangie Baxter. This is a collage sheet, so I'll probably cut it like the um, the elephants and you know some little bits and pieces. So and I'll probably add more. Oh, and I also got this bag that I just got from Alette. So I'm going to use that. So let me put this to the side. Now, when I do all my different books and journals and stuff, I have a bunch of these templates that I use uh, as a guide when I'm doing my holes. I usually do this one, I think. This is the one. Well, no, not that one. So I just have a whole bunch of guys. This is the one I have for my envelope journal. The smaller envelope. I always use this one. Okay, you guys. So this is just some scrap paper. And I'm just going to cut, you know, just a piece off. And I know that the width is nine. Okay. 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 So, it's easier to see. So I take my ruler, and as you can see, it's nine. So I'm going to mark the middle, which is four and a half. So that's my middle. And then I usually just do like an inch from, from the top. So like I'll mark it at eight, 
and then I'll mark it at like the one. So that's my uh, holes for my signature. My guide, I should say. So I just have this pokey tool. I can't remember where I got it. Probably like Joanne's or Michael's somewhere. Okay. So there's my little cheat sheet, if you want to call it. And I always put, I don't know, I always do this top. Just in case, you know. Okay, so. Now, this is what I do usually. I have this old one. It's, I cut it off like that stamping pad. Like this one. You can get this one at Julian's. So I just I cut that off. Let's do the big one today. So I'm going to line this up. And I always just create look like that. I don't know why. And then let's, I'm going to zoom in here. Okay. So this is my front cover and the top. And I just poke a hole. I go all the way. And the top. And then I just make the hole bigger because you kind of want like a bigger hole when you're sewing your signature. Okay. So those are my three holes. Okay, you can see that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange the signature that's going to go inside here. Okie doke. So I am back with part two. And I am just going to arrange the signatures. And I'm just going to fold up all my papers. If I die young, bury me in satin, lay me down on a bed of roses, sink me in the river at dawn, send me away with the words of a love song. Uh oh. Cleaning up the edges because you're going to end up cutting these shorter anyways. Uh, when you put your signature, when you stack everything together, there's going to be pieces, you know, hanging um, outside the edge and stuff. And it's just not going to look even. And you're going to end up cutting these down a little bit more anyways. Okay. So now I am going to figure out how I want my signature to look. So I know that I want, when I open it, I'm going to want a blue or a contrasting piece of paper. So I'm probably going to go with this one as the first of my signature. So usually what I do is um, I'll take this and then I'll put some writing paper or like um, a bag or something and then I just kind of roughly you know put it together and then I always kind of change change stuff around And I made these into pockets, so instead of cut, cutting it off at the end, I just scored it and then folded it up. I think 
I'm going to have this too. So I'm just going to do that. And this one is the inside. So I think these can be kind of inserts. I want to have this one in here for sure. Let's put that C's candy bag. So there's my signature. As you can see, there's, you know, a little bit of uh, excess paper hanging on the edge. Now, um, you can use, and I don't think I have it with me. Hmm. Let me see if I have my other one here. No, I don't think I have it. What did I do with it? You, I took, I don't know, I took it somewhere <laughs> outside of my craft room. But you can use that um, knife, the utility knife. I don't know what it's, I don't even know what it's calling you guys. But And you can just, you know, keep cutting slowly, slowly. I, I don't like doing that because I always butcher the sides of my papers. So, and I know this is kind of like the hard way to do. And if you're comfortable doing that, then you guys can do that. But not me so I know that I want to cut um, a little bit off of this one and I always just eyeball it you guys I never measure anything that's just how you know it's just how I work so and then this one is poking out a little bit so I am going to shave a little bit off of that some more off of this one yeah I think that'll do it yes so let's put it inside this and see if I need to shave off any more perfect not too thick because you're gonna put more pockets you're gonna put journaling cards you're going to put tags and all of that stuff is going to um, fill this little journal out. So what we're going to do now is I will um, use the same template and these all add into my signature at when I go to um, decorate it. So now let me find... Here amongst the mess. Here it is. Okay, so when I do my signatures or when I sew it, I have a little container here with these little binder clips that I use to hold my pages together so that it doesn't get all wonky. So let's go to the center. Makes it easier for you when you are going to poke your holes. So this, we're going to go top, top, and we are going to line it up like that. And then pokey tool, make your holes. Okay, like that. Again, I always go back in to my hole 
and just you know make it a little bit larger okay um, I will glue up those pockets later okay so as you can see our signature is ready to be sewn into the envelope this is the one that I always use okay for sewing in my signatures and I always use cross stitch thread so I'm gonna use this blue and I usually do I, I always do I'm always generous because you want it a little long so that you have a lot to work with when you're when you're going to tie it off so this little contraption I got oh my gosh I think it was Joanne fabric you guys and it's in like the jewelry section I believe and what it is it is a piece of wax inside and I always wax this thread because uh, it's I don't know when you're tying it off it makes it easier there's no slipping of the knot because if you don't um, tie it tightly enough and if it's not I find if it's not waxed the knot will slip and your signatures will become loose so I just pull it through a couple of times and has a nice coating of wax you don't need that contraption you can just buy just normal wax and you know just kind of create your own thing to wax your thread so um, you can go you can go through the inside or you can go in through the outside I always go from the inside most times so we're just gonna do that we're gonna start our signature off I always go um, actually I always go from this from the top and sew it in. I always leave a little nice bit on the inside. This is the tricky part. This one takes lots of practice you guys. It is probably the most frustrating part of sewing in signatures. I just oh, drives me crazy. But it's so worth it when it's done. And it doesn't have to be like super tight. Because you're gonna it's only a three-hole stitch, so it's pretty easy to, to tighten up after you've gone through the three holes. And I'm just going in through the middle, and this is gonna be our last stitch. And there we go. And I cannot tell you how many times I've sewn in a signature upside down. Many, many, many times, you guys. So now we're just going to pull. Pull up. Don't pull this way, this way, because you'll pull down through your paper. I just always pull up. Check the outside. Make sure it's, it's nice and, you know, getting to nice and tight. And we're just going to pull up again. And this is where you're going to tie off your signature to make sure it's nice and tight. There we go. Nice and tight. And then I always kind of do like this little bit of a double knot. I don't even know what you would call it, but... I just usually take the twine and then kind of make a knot. I just knot off the thread. And you don't have to do that, but I always do it just because I'm paranoid. I don't want it to fall apart. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of the thread hanging because I'm going to add some butterflies to this, the end of the strings. Now you just take off your your binder clips. Okay, let me zoom out here. Oh, 
Okay, so there is your book, you guys. Um, I usually just kind of go through each page and flatten it out like that. Just to kind of get it, you know, so it's not as stiff. And then, you know, I'll go and I'll decorate it. I'll do some stamping. And you can do the stamping beforehand. I never do that because I just don't have the patience. I always do it afterwards. What I usually do, I'll show you um, you guys what I do. I'll just do my stamping. Like if I'm going to stamp on this, I'll just go like this and stamp. Always put something underneath when you're stamping. So I really like how this little book turned out, you guys, especially the front. Um, I have to show you guys another one, another thing that you could do. If you don't want to do like tissue paper, you can do Mod Podge napkins on the front cover. You can paint the envelope. Um, you can use sprays, uh, acrylic paint do stenciling. There's like a ton of stuff you can do. And that's the back. That's going to be our pocket. So, uh, where is it? Okay, this is one that I did about a year and a half ago. I was thinking of using this one today, but um, this one has that like leathery look and feel. What I used was a walnut ink. So I used this to do this one and I used oh maybe half a bottle I guess however I will link a tutorial in my description box that shows you a much easier way to do it and it's by a gal named Paula and she has a tutorial on how to get this effect using I believe it's the distressing the refill vintage photo I think um, this works good too, but I find um, you have to use a lot of it. I'm not sure why, but I think Paula's tutorial looks easier. And you get the same effect. Um, I'm going to try her tutorial, but I'm going to use this instead to paint it, how she, her technique, instead of spraying it. So, you can also do your envelope like that as well. So many different ways you can decorate this envelope. But... Um, that's it for part two, you guys. Um, let me know if you want to see a part three of like, you know, putting it together like the pockets and the, the tags and, you know, whatnot if, and the, the, you know, the closing. Um, not entirely sure what I'm going to do for the closure yet, but uh, if you guys want to see that, let me know. I will continue on with the tutorial and I hope you guys, I hope I was in frame. And I hope that it was easy to follow. You know, I'm not a, an expert on tutorials. I'm sure I probably left it like a ton of details and stuff. If you want a part three, let me know. I'll be more than willing to do it. And we can finish this baby up together. So I hope you guys um, will make one of these. They're so cute. I mean, I just, I, I love the envelope. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, this envelope idea is not my idea, you guys. It is a... Yoli Bean inspired um, project. She has an envelope. The very first one that I saw was by Yoli Bean. So I just want to do a share it and say that it was her original idea. And I will also link that video in my description box as well. So until the next time, bye everyone.